Okay, we are on a remote show in Indianapolis. Why? I will tell you, we are kicking the stigma along with the Ursa family and the Colts who are nice enough to invite our show to play along uh, and help raise some money today. We have Peter Bukowski talking about the Packers. Stats wants to complain about what's going on in the Bay Area with the Niners. Of course, ahead of a Sunday Night Football bout against the Broncos in Denver. And I'm trying to avoid getting pied in the face by a devious character named Blue, the mascot for the Colts. But we might do it anyway. If we raise enough money, I'll tell you how to do it now. to be here. What a Thursday night football matchup. Lots to get to with Trubisky and such. But I did want to start the show by saying thank you to the Ursa family for welcoming me uh, into their home here. I'm in the Indianapolis Colts studios at their practice facility and it is the uh, inaugural Behind the Sidelines event that I'm taking part of. It's a fundraiser that benefits Kicking the Stigma, which is the team and the family's initiative to raise awareness about mental health disorders and remove the shame and stigma that's often associated with these struggles. So I'm here, of course. You can tweet the show at Up and Adams Show, or you can see these are those fancy photo things. You open up your camera and you pop it to that symbol thing, and it'll take you right to where you can donate and make a difference. And tonight, I'll be hanging out with guys like DeForest Buckner, who's on our show today, uh, Matt Ryan, a lot of stars and people trying to make it happen here. Uh, I also have Conrad with me, who has decided to be my partner <laughs> in travel. We were at LAX for about 90 hours yesterday. We've really gotten to know each other. We have. We've got to know each other very well. <laughs> After spending about 12 hours, 13 hours, got in at 5 a.m. But you know, we're in Indy, and this is so beautiful. The set is amazing. The so people here are great. It's one of the more welcoming teams in the league, I'll be honest. It's as, been, as a city, it's tremendous. It, so. it has been, and there's a huge game this weekend. My Uber driver here was talking nonstop about Andrew Luck and how they're oh. going to beat the Chiefs this weekend. Andrew Luck? What do yeah. you mean? Andrew Luck's living in a log cabin that, somewhere. That's, Nobody's seen him in a million years. They still love him. They still love him. Yeah, you are here. So, yes, like we're saying, we are kicking the stigma. If you can donate anything, and if I see a bump, and I know what the total is, and we have it up on my computer, if I see a significant bump in donations where I'm happy Happy enough, I'm going to get pied in the face, which is a tradition here with the Colts. Look, you can see my hands in your shot. Oh. Uh, and we're going to have a lot of fun here. Kaylin is going to drop by as well. Kaylin Jackson, which is incredible. She's one of the biggest badasses in the National Football League who does work uh, and does so much good for our game. So we'll talk about that. But we've got to get to Thursday Night Football. You and I uh, hung out and watched it together. We did. Yes, you, me, and the bags under my eyes this morning. And it was... You know, what a night indeed. Browns rebound. I said this to Brandon Marshall. I told this to Charlie Batch, who agreed with me this was a must-win game on both sides. The Browns pull it off with their run game. Who could have thought that? Who said that on the show who yesterday? Who would have said that? Who I would've? did. I did. Uh, so we'll talk, of course, about Amari Cooper. Got to give him his love. He looked good for a second game. But the, the real story here is that Trubisky has a short leash, probably. And the yeah. quote after the game, of course, Mike Tomlin asked about this. Uh, he asked if he would change it as they have 10 days to prepare for the Jets. And around week five, that schedule gets brutal. So everyone's saying, smartly, now would be a time to make that change or at least consider it. His quote was, I'm not in that mindset. I'm interested in reviewing this tape and figuring out how we collectively get better. So the answer to that question is definitively no. Now, this is an emotional answer. I know that reporters have to ask it, but why? I think we should stop asking it in these situations. It's an emotional answer. He wants to look at the tape. The thing is, though, everyone out there, and please tweet me if you feel differently, when he watches that tape, he's going to see no spark. That's the thing with Mitchell. And I don't even know that it's his fault. They can't get the run game going. Najee looked good at points, but the offensive line's an issue. They put so much money into the defense and the run game. And now the offensive line then suffers because of that because you're paying so many other kind of assets. Uh, Trubisky looked okay. I don't think Pickett would have to look much better if those two things were working. The thing is, though, they're not. So why would you roll out a rookie to deal with some of that when you know you can't turn around and take it back? So he's got a decision on his hands, and he might make a change. One of my bold predictions, of course, as my producer will tell you, was that it will be Trubisky starting in every single game this season. But that might mean that we are looking at Mike Tomlin's first season under 500. I mean, that is, that's, that's the whole thing there, right? Is that Mike Tomlin does not feel like he has time to just let Mitch Trubisky do his thing. Yeah. And, and the big thing we talked about last night too, right? Yeah. Was that this seems like the first time in a long time the Steelers don't have a plan. They're a historic franchise that does yeah. not have a plan. I think their plan was defense, and that blew up with T.J. Watt, and they have Minka, and their plan was run game. The offensive line's an issue, and they need a spark. 
So if you, that's that's what I noticed. A watching. spark, Thank George you. Pickens. Is that a spark? It's sure. He there's a George Pickens is a lot. Like, and we're comparing him to Odell. I'm not gonna even go down that wormhole. I, have at it if you want on Twitter. Uh, but the O line suffered because of that. You would put Pickens in to pick it in to get that spark. Yeah. And then maybe you do have a picket to pick in situation, and Brandon Marshall will have a lot of tongue twisters to be able to keep those names straight. I mean, Kenny Pickett is going to have, once he gets the, the starting quarterback job, he's yeah. going to have a leash because he's a hometown kid. Yeah. They, they, the fans want to see him. Pittsburgh wants to have this another hometown kid. I mean, they had been Walt Tomlin cares at all what that fan base is saying. I think he's going to do what's best for his team, but when he You're watches right. that tape, I mean, Brandon Marshall and Charlie Batch said it yesterday, right? Is that the best thing about Mike Tomlin is and why he's such a good head coach is because of his consistency. Every day he's the same guy when he comes in. But there. just because he, he says definitively no doesn't mean he can't change his mind after looking at the tape. And that's why asking the question puts him in a corner, and I don't appreciate it because it's an emotional answer. No, 100%. Uh, you didn't sleep at all. Why don't you take a baby nap over I, there? I'm going to take a baby nap Keep that mascot away from me as we hit some other big matchups because we got a big one on Sunday night. Jimmy G uh, took over, of course, Trey Lance, a brutal injury there for the quarterbacks in San Francisco. We talked to Chris Collinsworth, who was kind enough to join up in Adams earlier this week, and we got his take on the Jimmy G situation. I think somewhere in the back of all of our minds, we were wondering, you know, what is best for the 49ers, and we just didn't get a, to see enough of Trey Lance to know if he was the right answer. But we know that Garoppolo is good enough at least to take them to the championship game and the Super Bowl once. Chris Collinsworth told me that he would be at Top Golf in Denver preparing for this one. Rob Stats Guerrera is probably ready to throw stuff at the screen as all of this is happening uh, with his home team or the team that he loves and does a podcast for. But you cover all the NFL topics, so we'll get to all of it here. You are with Niners Nation, my friend Rob Stats Guerrera. Let's get to it. Where are you, where are you, where are you mentally with this whole quarterback situation? It's not good, Kay. It's really not good. You know, the, the thought with Trey Lance is that it was going to be more exciting, right? When Trey Lance dropped back to pass, you could say like, oh, shoot, here we go. And I still say that when the 49ers quarterback drops back to pass, but now it's Jimmy Garoppolo and I say, oh, shoot, here we go. It's just, you're always on the edge of your seat with Jimmy G. I know we don't have a choice now, but it's not a comforting situation. When you say it's not a comforting situation, this is a guy who took his team to a Super Bowl. I was texting you and saying, DeForest Buckner says, this is a cat that flips a switch. He rallies his team. He is that dude. I think I'm pretty comfortable with that. He flips the switch. The, listen, the 49ers had trash bags at quarterback <laughs> before Jimmy G showed up. DeForest Buckner in his career was 3-24 and 24 before Jimmy Garoppolo showed up. When Jimmy plays, they win. Now, it's not all Jimmy's fault, but that's all players care about is the fact that they win when Jimmy plays. He's won close to 70% of his games. So that's why they like him. But when you watch him, yeah, he's Sounds won like while they reason. played, but he's not the reason they're winning. And usually he's the reason that they lose. So that's the frustration that a lot of 49er fans have. But like I said, we don't have a choice. Uh, Broncos situation with Nathaniel Hackett, Russell Wilson, and the offense. That They're off to a rocky start, to say the least, and a sloppy start, let's be honest. Uh, how do you feel about what's going on there and as an opponent of the Niners? I don't feel great about what's going on in Denver. They've had their problems. From what I'm hearing, talking to people in Denver, Nathaniel Hackett's having a lot of trouble just getting the play calls into Russell Wilson quickly. It seems a little disorganized there. There's a lot mm. of inexperience, but... Russell Wilson is 17 and four, including the playoffs in his career against the 49ers. So a lot of the times it's, he may not look good, but lo and behold, Russ finds a way to pull a rabbit out of his hat and stick it to my 49ers. Yeah, a lot of inexperiences, right? A lot of guys in new positions, Hackett included, and he's getting some grief for, you know, riding that Aaron Rodgers train. So he, to start his NFL head coaching career, already has all of that doubt that he's going to have to lift off and try to make it happen under the bright lights and national stage on Sunday night. Now, uh, the Niners, like you said, you see Russell Wilson twice a year when he was the Seahawks, of course. Uh, will that be an advantage for this defense and how? I don't think it'll be an advantage for the defense. Um, they can't stop him, like I said. So it's not a matter of familiarity. Whatever yeah. he's done, he's been able to, to have success. Although I will say the Niners defense this year is being overlooked because of all the quarterback stuff. It is really good. It's probably the best defense that Kyle Shanahan has ever had. 
They're the giving up the fewest passing yards in the league, the second fewest rushing yards. That 49ers defense is going to have to carry them, and I think they're capable of doing that. What's your drama with Kyle Shanahan? Let it out. Just let it out here on the Friday. <sighs> He's too conservative. He's way too satisfied to go into the locker room with a 10-point lead. He acts like it's insurmountable, and time and time again, it's not, especially when you've got a quarterback whose greatest skill seems to be throwing the crucial interception at the terrible time that lets the other team back in the game. He loves punting on fourth down. He just He's way too <laughs> conservative. For an offensive guy, you would think he would want to put the pedal to the metal, and yet too often he wants to pump the brakes and it's incredibly frustrating. Yeah, I, I'm just, but does that feel better stats? I hope it does. And to look on the optimistic side before we let you go, George Kittle, are you hearing anything? I miss him out there. It was one of my uh, underappreciated storylines for this week and un underreactions about him potentially coming back because you might not like Jimmy G as much as everybody else, but Kittle loves him. Kittle absolutely loves him. There are a lot of guys in that locker room that wanted Jimmy to start over Trey. It looks like he's going to be able to play. He's been limited in practice for the past two days, but Kyle Shanahan and John Lynch both said he looks like he's on track to play. And that's good news for the 49ers, obviously because of him as a receiver, but also in the running game, their yards per carry and their points per game are all better when George Kittle plays. There we go. Stats, we appreciate you. We have your NFL podcast to look forward to for SB Nation and Niners Nation. And good luck on Sunday night. Maybe we'll talk to you next week. Thanks, Kay. When they are on their way to the Super Bowl. We'll see. I like the Niners this year. Uh, it's an intriguing one in Tampa that we have to get to. This, look at this. Come on. Two goats going at it. Bucks hosting the Packers in the sun. That matters. In the heat of Florida as we will get there. And for more on this game, let's bring in the host of Locked on Packers, friend of mine, Peter Bukowski. Listen, there's a lot of media, a lot of sports out there, a lot of real estate in my life. I listen to you on Locked On pretty much every day. Do you know that? I listen literally every day. Well, I'll have to shout you out next time. I appreciate that. Thank you for listening. Um, <laughs> we, we, we love it. Packers Nation is the best, as you know. Yeah, it's it's the best. You've got you know you you also have a weird thing with the quarterbacks. You're a Jordan Love guy. You're trying to make <laughs> make him popular with the fan base. But that is the story, my friend, for another day. But Brady and Rogers, it's where it's at. They've gone head to head four times in their careers as starters. Rogers, uh, let's see what is he's looking to get his second win over time. But uh, you know the wide receivers on both sides are completely blown up. Lazard, Watkins, Cobb, Watson. What's going on? And if they can't go, who is he looking at out there? I mean, do you have eligibility left, Kay? Like, we, we might have to be going out there making red red eye flights to Tampa because it, they're they're getting down to it, right? Just I'm just warming up my arm. What that was the kid said to Cam Newton. Yeah. Like, Alan Lazard's coming off an ankle injury, so okay, what does that look like? Uh, Randall Cobb has been sick all week. We don't know what his situation is. All of a sudden, Sammy Watkins popped up on the injury list this week after a 93 yard performance against the Bears, and Christian Watson, who is their speedy second round pick is on the injury report right now with a hamstring issue. So that leaves Romeo Dobbs, Amari Rogers, Juwan Winfrey off the practice squad. And then, and then that's where you and I slot in. So we're wide receiver four and wide receiver five right now. Let's go. Great. Yeah, I'm more of a deep downfield. You know, everyone thinks I'm like a slot receiver, <laughs> tough, gritty, undersized. But like, I got speed. I got. I can go downfield and make plays for him. You know, I'm not dropping that Christian Watson ball from week one. I'm not doing it, Rogers. Uh, tell me about. I want, I want, everyone's talking about, and I was, I was, tech, I was tweeting you, Dobbs of Palooza, right? Like everyone wants mm. this, everyone wants this connection to happen. I'm more interested in what you're hearing about why the connection with the Rogers to Rogers isn't happening. Because that whole thing with the water bottle and he's on special teams, he's not part of, oh. that couldn't have sat well with the young Rogers. So talk to me about what's going on there. The thing about Aaron Rodgers is he's going to tell you what's on his mind, right? He's not going to mince his words. Yeah. Now, he may use his words very specifically and say a thing that you think he means and he doesn't mean, but he wants you to think he means. Did you follow all of that? With Amari Rodgers, yeah. this is a guy they traded up for in the third round. He can't get on the field for offensive snaps, and we don't know why. Now, I think we do have to remember the when he was drafted, we were in the middle of an, an Aaron Rodgers, Green Bay Packers, pissing match about his future in Green True. Bay and Aaron Rodgers wanted Randall Cobb and it wasn't until after they drafted they Amari Rodgers that they trade for Randall Cobb and so 
now I think Amari Rogers is sort of a man without a country here because the front office wants him, but the quarterback eh, maybe doesn't. And we know that Aaron Rodgers um, will, will hold a grudge, even if it's not about what you're doing personally. Yeah. It's, it's super fascinating. We'll see if he hits. I mean, I would love for him to, so one of the receivers, just step up and, and get it done. Or add Odell, which is what I was saying yesterday to Brandon Marshalls. I think that, that, would be, uh, that would be absolutely perfect. But let's talk a little bit more about the run game, because that's what it is. That's what this team is. It's Aaron Jones. It's A.J. Dillon. I love them. They came alive last week against my woeful, sad bears. Uh, <laughs> how were they able to get back on track, and should I expect more of the same against the Bucks? Yeah, the, the run game has been awesome. I mean, there was a point late in the second half of that game where Aaron Jones had an eight-yard run and it hurt his per carry average. I mean, that is how good he was against the Bears. And there is a crazy stat out there about these two guys. There are three players, according to, to Next Gen Stats, that have not faced a loaded box this season, so eight or more in the box. Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon are two of those three guys. Every defense is just going to say, here are two safeties back. Yeah. Aaron, you're not going to beat us. We're, it's going to have to be the run game, and it has been. Aaron Jones leads the league in rushing yards over expectation. In fact, 4.91, no one else is over, or one other player is over 2.25. Just to put the 4.91 into perspective, okay? Dalvin Cook's wow. career yard per carry average, 4.7. Derrick Henry, career 4.8. Their top 20 all-time okay. in yard per carry average. That's Aaron Jones' yards over expected. They have been unbelievable in the run game through two weeks, but it is just two weeks. Now they have to face a Tampa front with Vita Vea and Shaq Barrett and linebackers who run like the wind. This is by far their biggest right. task, but they need this run game to keep Aaron Rodgers clean on third down. I think Colts fans see that I'm, I'm in Indianapolis doing the show. They're like, we need our run game. We have Jonathan Taylor. We have Q. Let's get it going. And they've got the Chiefs <laughs> on Sunday. The run game is so important. And that's what the, the Packers, at least for now, have turned into. One more for you. The LaFleur gets lost in all of this. Hmm. And I texted you about this yesterday. Like, what, what's going on with him? Because this could be one of his last seasons, his last season with Aaron Rodgers. And his legacy is yet to be written. Yeah, I, the thing about Matt LaFleur that, that I have been saying now for two years, he should have won coach of the year last year. I, I like, I don't, I just, there, there is no argument to me for Mike Vrabel. I understand Derrick Henry got hurt, but the Packers won 13 games. They, they lost twice in games they were trying to win when Aaron Rodgers was the quarterback. They lost the game in Detroit in week 18 that they played a half, and they lost the Jordan Love game in Kansas City. If you go back to the last four seasons when Mike McCarthy was the coach in Green Bay, Aaron Rodgers 11th in EPA okay. per play. 11th in adjusted EPA per play and 23rd, 23rd K in completion percentage above expectation in the Matt LaFleur era, second in EPA per play, second in adjusted EPA per play and third in completion percentage above expectation. I can't He's, handle he the went math. From, he, I know. He went from a fine, good quarterback to back to being Aaron effing Rogers, destroyer of worlds, father yeah. of dragons, Whoa. all of that stuff. Whoa. And, and that is Whoa. part of the Matt LaFleur effect. He got Aaron Rodgers to buy in. Kevin Clark at The Ringer wrote a great piece about the relationship that those two guys have and the buy-in that Matt LaFleur got. I don't think we should just dismiss that relationship and what schematically they've done to change what this offense is doing and to put those two things together. We it's know so Rodgers can, can, be tough to, can be tough to deal with. He's a tough nut to crack, but if he respects you, you can collaborate together, and they have, and I think he deserves a ton of credit. You talk to guys in that locker room. They love Matt LaFleur. I think the games like this, though, and it's the late window on Fox. It's not the Sunday nighter, but it's the this matchup. You rarely see it. Everybody's all in, even if it's a bust of a game and there's no wide receivers. This was one of those games that matters in the legacy of Matt LaFleur in scheming those guys open, and it matters because he should be talked about in the ranks of those McVeighs and those Shanahan's offensively Absolutely. is one of those minds. You get wins, you get wins against Arizona without Devonta Adams. You get wins, you know, over Tom Brady in a situation where you don't have receivers and they're all you know banged up and there's no chemistry and you somehow make it happen against that defense. Those are those kind of games that you hold on to that do change the narrative on somebody or around them. That is so hard to do. It is almost impossible to rewrite how people look at you in the National Football League. So uh, I appreciate that note and I think everyone sort of consider that when they're watching this game. Peter Bukowski, you are brilliant. You're too brilliant. I can't follow the math or the <laughs> the thing about expected. I don't even know that was a thing. I, I'm just going to admit it. I don't even know that was over expected regards or whatever. I don't know. But you're brilliant and we love you here and we always listen to Locked on Packers to get smarter about what's going on. And I will be 
at a Packers game against the Jets in a couple of weeks. I'm going to hit you up. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll be there. Let's me? do it. Okay, Bukowski, you're the best. All right, coming up next, uh, I get to sit down with DeForest Buckner, one of my favorites. We just talked to Stats. He loves Jimmy G. He tells me why he loves Jimmy G. He also talks about the Colts locker room, how they can turn this thing around. He's, of course, a defensive leader and a captain. DeForest Buckner is with us next, right here on Up and Adams Live from Indy. Donate! Do you have any donations coming in? Got a time ahead. Oh, uh, yeah, I think about that all the time, honestly. I mean, it, it... How often? Like, what's all the time? Uh, almost, I mean, damn near every day. <laughs> Kicking the stigma with the Indianapolis Colts. I am in Indy. Oh, Ari saying, never forget when Andrew Luck led the Colts on a 28-point comeback. Wow, Andrew Luck's really coming up a lot in this interview. I mean, he's the number one guy in, in, in Indianapolis, you, right? Do we have to talk about David Letterman next because he's okay. from here? Is that what else has to happen here? Maybe <laughs> talk a little Indy 500. Come on! We got the Chiefs in town this Sunday. That's right. I'm not the only one in Indianapolis. Patrick Mahomes and company. Uh, they got to get Jonathan Taylor a go going. Please, let's get this going to turn the tides around and the luck around for the Andrew Luck list. Colts, who have met Ryan under center. I'll be hanging out with him tonight uh, with the Colts that they're kicking the stigma event. If you want to donate and make a difference, please do. Any bit amount of help uh, is loved and welcomed and wanted during this show. So we really appreciate it. Kaylin Jackson will be joining me to talk a little bit more about that and tonight's event and all the work that they're doing in a little bit. Uh, but for now, I did get to hang out with DeForest Buckner for a bit. Incredible player, the veteran leader. Uh, and I sat down with him. I mean, this is a first-team All-Pro. This is someone who was a two-time Pro Bowler. We talked about leadership. We talked about what it takes to turn things around when the season doesn't start as you want. And, yes, we did talk a little Jimmy G and that Super Bowl loss. So you're in your third season with the Colts, right? Things mm -hmm. not going as planned, of course. Right. You're such a natural leader. How much more do you put on yourself when there's a going to be? Yeah, um, definitely, you know, stepping up more, you know, vocally for sure. You know, when, when times are needed, obviously, like, you know, um, you know, obviously times when things aren't going well or little things like that, um, just finding the right moment to, you know, voice my opinion and, you know, step up and lead. Um, you know, I've I've grew in that aspect. I was I started off more of a, you know, lead by example type of deal. But over the years, I've got more comfortable with, you know, just stepping up and, you know, saying my piece just because. I've noticed, obviously, like, um, you know, when I say something, guys really, you know, take it to heart, you know what I mean? And really um, listen to, you know, what I have to say, so. What you were saying after that loss to the Jets, I mean, <laughs> Devo, I've never heard you swear before. You were cursing. Yeah, no, it was, um, it, it, it was just embarrassing, you know what I mean, on all accounts. Um, yeah, I mean, I was, I was, I was pissed. Uh, you know, I was pissed at my performance, everybody's performance, really, you know what I mean? From top to bottom, like I said, I really meant that um, not one person had a great game. So when something like that happens, how does one go as a leader in the locker room and turn it around? Because it can be turned around. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we've been in positions like this before. I mean, we have the right guys in the locker room to turn things around when things things get tough. We have the right guys to point at themselves and look in the mirror and say, what do I, what can I do to be better to help the team, you know, and not point fingers. Um, you know, when Gus came in, just talking about being a servant leader, you know what I mean? Everybody can be a servant leader and, you know, help, help the, not only help themselves, but help each other, the man alongside of you. And, um, you know, that's what the guy's been doing. Be positive. Let's shout out some of those leaders. Who are the leaders in the locker room? Like, I'm assuming Shaquille Leonard, one of them. Yeah, Shaq, um, you know, you got Kenny, Gilly, uh, Grover Stewart, um, you know, Zaire Franklin, um, you know, obviously um, that's on the defensive side, really. And then um, um, you got guys like, you know, obviously Matt Ryan, you got Q, you got uh, Ryan Kelly, um, you got Pitt, you got JT. You know, you, we have a lot of guys that can lead in this locker room. All the guys feed off of that energy because it's, it's all authentic. You know what I mean? Everybody's themselves. Nobody's trying to be somebody else or not. You know what I mean? Everybody knows their role and they embrace it. Uh, Shaquille Leonard, how much does he, is he missed right now? I mean, he's missed a lot. You know what I'm saying? I mean, especially on an emotional standpoint, you know, part of the game, you know, he's a big emotional leader that we have. He, he still brings the juice each and every day when he comes in, coming into work, you know, get the guys going. He does everything that he can, you know, whether it's watching film to help guys that are on the field. And when he's not, you know, helping them see tendencies and picking up little things, even on the sideline. He's a, I mean, talk about a, a just a, a leader you know, and a football guy. I mean, he's he's your guy. I met Jonathan Taylor. He was so composed and like mature mm -hmm. beyond his years. Do you think he's the best running back? And can he be in 2022? I believe so, yes. I mean, he's got it all, you know, size, speed. He can cut 
catch out the backfield. I mean, he can make a cut and then, you know, take it 60, 70, whatever you needed to do. Um, you know, he can, he can run outside, inside the tackle. I mean, he's got it all. He's a complete back. And uh, we've seen it, you know, last year, obviously. And, you know, I know the offense is going to get things going. And, um, I mean, he's going to he's gonna make things happen and, and take the lead by storm. What's your relationship with Colts fans in Indianapolis? No, yeah, I mean, I love them. Um, you know, this has been awesome since day one, you know, embracing me um, you know, after the trade and everything. And also, I mean, just, you know, like around town, you know, going around town and everything. And also even in my own neighborhood, you know, raising a family, um, being able to, you know, just raise my family, take my boys to the parks and little things like that. It's been great. How often do you get back to Hawaii? Because it's a, it's a far cry from India. Yeah, I mean, I usually try to go back every year with the fam, but um, this off season for sure, we're going to make a trip out there. <laughs> you don't ever surf or anything, did you? Um, no, nah, not a big surfer. More fishing, spear fishing, uh, some uh, body surfing, but not stand up. I tried. I too big for that. <laughs> I can't even imagine. I would yeah. never try. You're trying to get players to think about their money. The players' company. I think it's very cool. It's a, a mm. partnership of you and a lot of the other NFL players. And I was wondering if you could just give me like your best finance tip. Yeah, you know, um, honestly, just. Just being, being smart with your money. I mean, I've been like that since day one. You know what I mean? Um, you know, obviously not just blowing everything that I get, you know, check by check, let me check by check. And I got a great financial advisor that's been helping me along the way. You know, one of his key tips was uh, one wife, one house, one car. <laughs> <laughs> And Keep so, uh, Keep <laughs> yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? And, uh, you know, just being smart with your investments, knowing what you're investing in, um, you know, to obviously help you in the long run. You were unique in, in that you played in a Super Bowl and that, that you lost a Super Bowl. So I'm curious, yeah. how often do you think about that Super Bowl loss? No, uh, yeah, I think about that all the time, honestly. I mean, it, it, how often? Like, what's all the time? Uh, almost, I mean, damn near every day. <laughs> the goal is a Super Bowl, you know what I mean? A world championship. And, I was so close, obviously, with the Niners my last year there. And, you know, just to get a taste of it and, you know, to come to come short, uh, it's it's definitely haunting. You know what I mean? I, I have a certain play that I always that I always it's always going through my mind. It's the, the third and 15 play that Tyreek Hill. And I we run an exit game and I come around the corner and Pat's just retreating, retreating. And I hit him as soon as he gets lets the ball go. You know, he's, I got him on the ground. I look up, and it's a completed pass. And they, they you know, they end up converting uh, on the drive and scoring. And obviously, um, you know, that that gained all the momentum, you know, that they needed. And you know, if we, I mean, who knows? You know what I'm saying? I mean, I make that play. Um, you know, who knows what the, you know, it would have been fourth and forever. They would have punted. You know, we could have maybe went down and scored again. And so, so. Did it change you as a player that one yeah. play? Definitely. You know, um, just. Just uh, like I said, I mean, as a player, that's that's all you dream of. You know what I mean? I was living the dream. I was, you know, like as a growing up as a kid, you know, imagine myself in the Super Bowl and, um, you know, having a, a, a decent game. And, you know, obviously the, our team's winning. And then all of a sudden that one play happens. Wait, you did have a good game. Let's not, like, come yeah. on. Let's not, wait, not you put your hands on him. You said, not yet, yeah, yeah. your old team is in the news as usual. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. always, always in the news. Uh, <laughs> the team rallies around Jimmy Garoppolo. Why mm -hmm. is that? Why is he that guy? Was it about him? Yeah, I mean, I mean, Jimmy, I mean, he's just a, he's a lot big locker room guy. You know what I'm saying? He gets along with everybody. Um, and uh, it's just his style of leadership. I mean, he takes it by, you know, he, he takes the room by storm. I mean, you know, I remember the first time, you know, Jimmy's first start, um, you know, you, you know, Jimmy's always been, you know, a cool dude, you know, complex yeah everything and then um i just remember him gathering the team up um on his first start you know my i think it was my third year in the league and you know just something he, you know he just turned switch and everybody was like oh you know what i mean like okay yeah, what was the switch what do you mean no he just i don't know it was just like it, it he just you know a different person it's just the competitor side of jimmy came out you know what i mean and he just he just, everybody was looking around like, okay, like this is what we needed. You know what I'm saying? Like we can get it, we can get behind this guy. You know what I'm saying? And he just, just the, the way he demanded the room, you know, how confident he was, you know, it's infectious. When you're confident like that going out there, you know, you got the guys around you confident, you know, knowing that, you know, yeah, today's going to be the day we dominate. You know what I'm saying? And so he just got that it, you know, that leadership and he got that it factor, you know, when it comes to leadership and leading a team at the quarterback position. I gotta tell you, I've never root, and I don't know that I'll, I'll root for anything all year as much as I'm rooting for you to absolutely crush Patrick Mahomes this weekend. Like, I, <laughs> I appreciate it. I guess you could say, um, you know, kind of 
a little little bit of payback, I guess. You know what I'm saying? Um, but uh, it, it's it's a great opportunity for our, our team as well. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's yeah. count, counting us out, obviously after especially after last week's loss. Um, it's our it's a home opener. You know what I mean? And uh, you know, guys are gonna be pumped. You know, to, to be playing at home in, in week three, and you know, it's just a great opportunity for us to to really you know to show everybody that you know that we're not out of it. If I was doing a fantasy draft and picking locker room people, players who I would want, leading a team, turning a team around, I'm not, I don't know. I think DeForest Buckner might be my number one overall pick. He does it on the field. He does it off the field. He did it for the San Francisco 49ers to get to that Super Bowl, sacks Patrick Mahomes, and is haunted by a play, and I love Mahomes, but they've got the Chiefs in town. There's a vendetta there. Conrad, you were in the room when I was interviewing him earlier this week. He went in depth. He has a picture on his cell phone of him yep. coming short that's helping motivate him in this game, trying to turn a locker room around. This locker room is full of leaders, old veterans and young leaders like Jonathan Taylor, too. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, DeForest Buckner, I mean, watch that interview. You can just see how important uh. this guy is to the locker room. And, like, he's just such a good human being as well. But, like, it, it hurts to hear that he is still haunted by that Super Bowl right. loss because they did everything they possibly could to beat him. Just sometimes guys like Pat Mahomes can change a game in a flip of a switch. But if he, like, sacks him and they oh. win, or so, uh, that would be We need it. Insane. We need to see it. The world needs it. I mean, Chiefs, we love you. We love you, <laughs> but we, but love we his, need DeForest to get that. Story also, one wife, one house, one car, your take. Did you hear that advice from him? I have none of those things, <laughs> so I am kind of, well, I have a car. I lied. But I, I, am, I am jealous about the other two things. I don't have any of those things, so that's pretty interesting. We'll be back. I mentioned a, a fantasy locker room, guys, draft. How about your actual fantasy team? You need sleepers. I did some digging. I had a lot of time at LAX to stew this over yesterday. I've got the best guys to put in your lineup next. We're gearing up for a huge week of college football, and you can get in on the action and win part of a $20,000 prize pool. It's part of Twisted T's College Football Picks Contest, and it's free to enter. Just go to FanDuel.com and sign up for your chance to win. You like that? Okay, I've been with you for 24 hours, and all you talk about is the weather. Tell me what all this weather okay, talk is about. That's not true. I don't talk about the weather. I all don't the check time. the weather. You're an old man looking at the weather on your app every five seconds. But I do want to talk a little weather. I want to call my shot because we're going to have Kaylin Jackson in here. Then I'm going to have whipped cream all over my face, and I'm going to get pied by that mascot blue. So before I get there, I just want to put this out there. Not that I'm calling my shot. Not that I wish negativity upon anyone. It's just something that I've been collecting over the years. It's a secret. Aaron Rodgers can't take the heat. I'm just going to put it out there. He, can you look up the weather in Tampa at game yeah. time? Late window on Fox. Let me give you some numbers on Aaron Rodgers here. He's 3-5 and five in his career in the state of Florida, including what we saw last year, week one, against the Saints, played in Jacksonville, maybe by design. He has 11 touchdowns. Want to know how many interceptions? He who does not throw interceptions, want to know how many he has? How many? 11 and 11. 11 touchdowns, 11 interceptions, woof. 60% completions. He's only thrown 10 interceptions in the last three years. He has 11 in eight games played in Florida. Give me the weather. What's 89 the degrees on Sunday. 89. Woo! 89 with 65 percent. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's the Florida. I don't know if it's the heat. But there's something with Aaron Rodgers, and now some beat up receivers, and on both sides that exists. But. One goat plays in Florida. The other goat doesn't like to play in Florida. I'm just putting that out there. And now it's time for some sleepers. Aaron, don't get mad at me, but everybody has a kryptonite, right? Mine's, you know, sweet tarts and Sour Patch Kids. Yours is the heat. All right, we love value, so let's get you some options. Damian Pierce, a lot of people loved him. He was the preseason darling, the training camp darling, and then people are freaking out about it. But I like him this week. I do. He's ranked outside the top 25 at running back on Fantasy Pros. 15 carries and a catch last week. 76 total yards. Broncos defense is tough. I think the best is on the way. He's got the Bears. The Bears have allowed over five yards per carry and most rushing yards in the NFL so far this season. Jacoby Myers, as we move it along here. He's outside the top 40 on Fantasy Pros. How many targets does he have in two weeks? 19. That kind of volume, get him in your lineup. He's coming up nine catches for 95 yards against the Sears last week. Now, he did not practice. I like Nelson Aguilar, too. I already told you to get these guys in your lineup. They're taking shots up with New England. And that Ravens secondary is banged up. They got torched by the Dolphins. They've allowed him the most points to opposing wide receivers so far in this early year. Russell Gage. 
Another guy, uh, you up? Yeah, he's up and you gotta get him in your lineup. Mike Evans suspended, Godwin and Julio yet to practice. Russell Gage might be the number one option this week. Uh, Brady is gonna look his way often. Uh, Scotty Miller, of course, too, all those guys. But even though the Packers secondary is solid, their ranking on the year is a bit skewed after facing the, Pack the Bears last week. So uh, I think Gage is gonna have some opportunities to pick up some points here. Hayden Hurst. Why do I love Hayden Hurst? I talk about him all of, well, he's clutch, third down conversions. I think he does a lot of things that they were missing last year. No, you know, I like CJ Uzama a lot, but he's not a starting tight end if you look at Fantasy Pros. And if you opted to stream tight ends this year, which I always do, Hurst is a great option. He's got the Jets defense. He's seeing over seven targets a game. It's an incredible volume if you are streaming tight ends or if you're playing daily fantasy over at FanDuel. Last but not least, you want a quarterback, Conrad? I do. Well, you can't draft Andrew Luck, even though you're obsessed with him. How about Carson Wentz up against Philadelphia? Ooh, little revenge game situation. Lane Johnson talked about it. it's all love between Philly and Carson Wentz, he said, but he's thrown for 300 plus yards, finishing inside the top five in fantasy scoring in both games played this season. That's great. He's tied for the league lead with seven touchdown passes. That's unbelievable. In two weeks. Nobody had that on the bingo card. It's true. Nobody had that. Uh, and he's got this rematch, and he's ranked just 14th on Fantasy Pro. So here's my thing. If you lost Dak Prescott, if you lost Trey Lance, ride the hot hand until he gives you a reason not to. You got a running back, a wide receiver, two wide receivers because I love you so much. A tight end who I really like because I like those Bengals and I like keeping them in my positive thoughts. And Carson Wentz is the perfect streamer for your fantasy needs. All right. We'll be back after this. Kaylin is joining us. Kaylin Jackson, obviously talking about supporting an amazing cause. It's why I'm in Indianapolis. We are kicking the stigma. We were told super young that you have to be tough, you have to be macho in a male perspective. You feel like, you know, you're not able to open up and, um, you know, be vulnerable with your feelings, you know what I mean? You have this idea of this machismo, right? Like that you have to always be the toughest, the strongest. For me as a man, it's about opening up. Not feeling too macho to tell someone how you're feeling when you're feeling down. Opening up your heart and, and sharing with other people the way that you're feeling. I have a twin sister who, uh, when I'm sad, I call her and talk to her. We normally have the same feelings. I FaceTime my grandchildren. That always seems to kind of give me a boost, even when you're having your darkest moments. Kicking the stigma means talking about it. It's something that a lot of people go through. It's normal. Nothing's wrong with you, and in fact, come join us because we all feel this way. It's OK to feel not OK. Kicking the stigma. It's okay to feel not okay. Colts.com slash KTS kicking the stigma. Tonight, the Ursay family hosts the inaugural Beyond the Sidelines event. It's a fundraiser to benefit kicking the stigma. It supports the team's initiative, raising awareness about mental health disorders, removing the shame. It is okay to be not okay. As we bring in Kaylin Jackson, the vice chair and owner of the Indianapolis Colts. Hi! Hi! I'm so glad you're here. I've like spoken so many times, but to be here in I person know, with you. I know, it's the first time we get to actually hug each other. Thank you for having me here. <laughs> Thank you for doing this. Seriously, yeah. anyone, we always say anybody who's willing to talk about this and highlight this, it just means so much, you know, not just us, but the people that we're helping. So. The Colts are always one of the, they're the warmest fan base, the best city, like whether it's Combine or Super Bowl was so incredible here. Uh, so just thank you for having me. And let's talk more about the initiative, but also the event tonight where there's Andy Grammer is performing. <laughs> Peter Berg did that spot? Yes. Tell so me. So that's been so fun. He actually... When you talk about the response we've had from people, that's a perfect example. He's someone we'd never met. Um, reach out to us cold, you know, reach out to someone at the league and said, can I please talk to Jim Mercer and his family? I want to know what they're doing. I'm so interested in the fact that an NFL team is standing up for this. It means a lot to his family and him. And that's what we've really found is we've hit a nerve in such a positive way and because this really does touch everybody in one way, shape, or form. Somebody knows either a friend or a family member who's gone through something. Mm -hmm. um, and you really start to realize that the more you talk about it with people. I was talking to, even on this show, we've had 11 episodes and two of them among the guests, Brandon Marshall, who was a pioneer in his own right in talking about mental health, when it was very much stigmatized in the yes. NFL world, at least. And then Lane Johnson, who's spoken very candidly about you know receiving therapy and, and, and you know going through what he went through in the past couple of years. How have you noticed in, in this locker room 
sort of the openness and willingness of players to come forward and be open about. Yeah, I mean, I think we always talk about it like anything. Leadership starts from the top, and we want, you know, this has shown them, you know, that this matters and that we care about them in that way and that you really have to take care of your whole body. Um, and so we've, you know, it's been a really unique experience. I think when we started it, literally right before we um, launched, our, like, that we were doing this, mm -hmm. Shaquille Leonard's article came out oh, yeah. um, about his struggles. And we didn't even know that that was going at the same time. So it was such a kind of kismet moment where we were able to connect with him on that. And he was obviously so excited to help us with this. And so that's a big part of, you know, obviously he's been involved with this in a big way, but a lot of our players have. And I think the more that they others see that, you know, especially kids, you know, they look up to these guys so much and to be able to see their heroes saying it's okay to talk about this and that I'm not always okay and that's okay. It's a huge deal and it makes such a big impact. And sometimes you don't even realize, you don't stop and check in with yourself to see if you're okay. Like that's something personally, and I'm sure we'll talk about this tonight. And there, I mean, a lot of the Colts will be there, right? Matt Ryan will be there, DeForest Buckner will yes. be there in the house. But you know, personally, I've always just been career driven. But it almost it was such a hamster wheel of just focusing on that and nothing else that it wasn't until the pandemic happened that I was sort of kicked out of that hamster wheel and realized, like, am I happy? Am I OK? Am I even stopping to check in with myself yeah. on my level of anxiousness or my level of stress? And then you start realizing even what I saw like Frank Reich talking about in that piece by Peter Berg. What makes you happy? What can you do to reset yourself, to check in with yourself? Personally, for me, it's I go on hikes. I like to be out in nature. I like to be still and quiet, and I'm, I'm an introvert. I sort of paid more attention to that and gave myself more space that it's okay to not be on all the time. It's yeah. okay to not feel like I have to, you know, be bubbly and great. Like when I leave work, it's okay to feel down. It's okay to sit in that and feel my feelings. Yeah. And that's something that. You know, you don't have to be a, an NFL player or a kid who's, you know, looking up to an NFL player to take an example from kicking the stigma to just take the time for yourself to check yeah. in. Well, and I think, like, even you talking about it right now makes an impact. It really, truly does to anybody who's watching. And I think, you know, my dad just recently was talking about the impact that we can make with our own stories. And he's like, you're either a living example in death or in life. And he's like, I'm lucky I'm living. He's like, but I'm no better than the people that are in the ground and lost their battle to this, to, to, or to any of these disorders. He's like, I am no better than that. I just happen to still be here. And we're gonna do everything we can to make as much impact as we can in this space while we're still here. And I will do that as well. And that's why I'm here. And we're excited about tonight. Musical guest, Andy Grammer will be there. Tell us about the event. And then we of course have where you can donate on the screen right now. We'll yes. be all over social as well. And my hair looks like this because I think I'm about something's about to happen. So don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm sorry I look like this. Uh, but I will say, uh, I want to know like where the money goes or like how you know, to sort of uh, help people understand how far their donation goes. Yes. So, well, today um, it's important to note we've committed over $17 million. Um, we've had 38 grant recipients and through that we've distributed about $4.1 million to mostly local organizations, but also national ones. Um, but tonight that will be going direct, all the funds will be going directly into our Kicking the Stigma Action Grant Fund, which goes to fund all of those amazing organizations. Um, and I mean, the list goes on and on. I could spend hours talking about the impact that we've made, but we will highlight certain ones this evening. One of them is the Be Happy program with Riley, because um, youth and adolescent mental health has definitely become a huge pillar of ours because it's, it's really something that our state struggles with, but also nationally. I mean, you hear everyone talking about it. Um, but for example, in the state of Indiana, the second leading cause of death in Hoosier adolescents is suicide. Um, and it used to be third. And so it's, you know, and we've talked about this, it's probably gonna get worse before it gets better, but really trying to have every single do dollar go to rebuilding the infrastructure that's broken right now because we can fix it. We just have to do it together. So yeah, and you can, and I remember the first call we got on about this. I said you're so I was so refreshed that you're not complacent. It's not something that needed a little scratch or throw a little bit of money at it and now it's gone. Like no. you know that there's so much more work to do. Years, years, you know, we hope decades of work in this space and you know, we obviously hope that it moves the needle and gets better. Um, but we hope to really act as the best practices for people too. You know, that's part of what this campaign has been so beautiful too, is that people have reached out to us. How can we get involved? How did you do what you're doing and how did you pick who you're working with? And so we really feel like we're making an impact um, and it's gonna take some time, but every dollar matters and we really take it 
very seriously that we are looking strategically and not just you know throwing money at things. We're really working hard and, and picking the right organization. We are making progress. Kaylin Jackson is here, and so is Blue because this is I, I don't even know why this is a thing with the Colts. Can we show a little bit of this, Kaylin? Why? Why? So why? Blue has two sides to him. He is very loving and kind and sweet and cuddly, but he has this mischievous side that we all yeah. love so much. And I actually even got pied during our 21 Days of Kindness. There I am right there. Kaylin! Um, and it's really, it's <laughs> fun if I'm laughing so hard. I And a good thing I didn't fall off the treadmill because that would have been bad. Um, but that was in our players workout area. So they a, all watched me. That would have been have a whole different kind of viral me. video yes, if you had fallen off the thing. Okay, Blue, I see you. Okay, let's do this. This is for him. Please don't do it yet. Don't do it yet. Go to <laughs> goalcults.com slash KTS to donate. Make a difference, and we'll see you guys tonight. Okay. You can do it. Go. Oh, no. He's not going to do it. Oh, he's going to Oh. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Wow, you're like a professional. Uh, that. Woo! Here's your towel. We'll be back. <laughs> Oh, it's so good. Oh, Kaylin, Kaylin, Kaylin. One. It was a good one, Blue. Great. You're like a professional. Okay, I, I think we've seen it enough. <laughs> I think we've seen it enough. You know, the fake eyelashes are a good, like, awning. Yeah. That it's not quite getting in my eyes. Can we get a little close-up of me? Hey, Conrad, could you help me out here, please? Yeah, Conrad, our Trevor producer, towel. Kaylin, we appreciate you. Thank you, thank you. Hey, Blue, Blue, come on! Yeah, give us a little help here. <laughs> <laughs> We're kicking the stigma! That's <laughs> Conrad Company. Kaylin, we appreciate you coming so much. Shout out Andy Grammer. Shout out Peter Burke. Shout people out. Yes. Matt Ryan will and be here tonight. And tonight, colts.com slash KTS. You can find ways to donate and also bid on our silent auction items and help us in a lot of different ways. So and thank you I, in advance. I'm going to be posting about it. Make a difference. Tweet your receipts that you, you know, it all interact with you guys. Maybe I'll hit an Instagram live while I'm there. We will see you. And thank you, for, to, thank you to the Colts for having us here. This is our first remote up and out. Adams. We're making history today. Woo! Woo! <laughs>